I don't know if it's just fate, but I ended up with this again somehow. Hey look, it's that really cool looking product that tried to fix a not so great Nerf Blaster and some people really got a lot of use out of and some people can't stand. Don't worry, I'm going to delve into all of the sauce in this video because there's a lot to go over. But, but this is the Elite 2.0 Shockwave. I paid way too much for this. And uh, we're, we're here right now. I hate this blaster. Oh yeah, you think I bought this at the thrift store? Oh no, wait, now you're thinking I bought it at the retail store? Incorrect. I bought it at both. I bought this at a retail store over a year ago and I didn't even have it for two full days because it didn't work. And then yesterday we went back to the thrift store and here it is. And I just said, you know what? This is destiny telling me I need to give this another shot. <laughs> this one doesn't work either! But now at least I have a chance to show why it doesn't work on camera. So you know what? We're gonna go front to back completely objective about the Elite 2.0 Shockwave and then I will take the opportunity to yell about all my problems with it later. Let's get started. So the Elite 2.0 Shockwave. Pretty much the only Elite 2.0 blaster that I think needed to exist outside of maybe the Warden <laughs> and subsequently both of these blasters ended up being like the worst received ones in the entire lineup. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. This blaster was an extremely good idea. Why? The Surge Fire sucks. The whole point of the Surge Fire was to be a sort of Tommy Gun, sort of hip-fed firing blaster with a 15-dart cylinder that had slam fire. Well, and everything about the Surge Fire sucked. It was big, it felt cheap, it was clunky, the cylinder was unreliable, it would misfeed all the time, and the performance was meh. And it was received terribly when it came out. And it's still received terribly to this day. So Hasbro decided, you know what? That was a mistake. Here's our chance to fix it. Here's the shockwave. It's the same blaster, except we've got tactical points all over it. We got rid of the slam fire because that didn't work anyway. We made the cylinder a lot more aerodynamic so the air would flow through it and it wouldn't be as heavy. And we gave it a brand new color scheme and a glorious looking design. I love the way this thing looks. So how did it work? <laughs> <laughs> and don't worry, we'll get into all the sauce later. But first, let's start off with the design. This blaster looks amazing. I love the appearance. It looks like a cyberpunk Tommy gun, especially with these like little tiny ridges in the shell, like right there and right there. It looks so industrial, and I just don't understand why. I mean, it definitely looks great. I'm just not sure how or why they went with this specific design, but honestly, I'm glad they did. They integrate the priming handle into it too by having it like wrap around the barrel. These little Elite 2.0, kind of like this thing, I don't know why that sort of decal is on so many Elite 2.0 blasters, but yet, there it is, it's here too, and it looks great. They also give you just the right amount of sling points for the occasion, with one up here, and this sprue-covered one in the back. What is going on here? Did they not finish cutting this off? But in general, I love the design. Now, going over the ergonomics, it's the same Elite 2.0 grip that we all know and love slash hate, depending on how big your hands are. I personally really like it, and this blaster is no exception. It's a very comfortable blaster. It feels really good to hold. The trigger actually feels really good and is surprisingly using a metal spring. No plastic springs here. Thank you. At least I think it is. I mean, I've kind of gotten really good at telling the difference between metal and plastic springs and this really feels like a metal spring. As for the foregrip, uh, it's almost perfect. Almost. Almost. Almost! It is a little bit small, but the whole front of it is flat, so your index finger just doesn't know what to do. It's like, dude, should I be here or should I be more forward? Then I don't know what to do! But generally, I do think that it is okay. Going over the functionality and emphasizing on why I don't really like this foregrip, here's how it works. You pull it back, you push it forward, and you fire once doesn't have slam fire like the surge fire did, which is probably a good thing because the surge fire slam fire was really unreliable. The issue here is, look at that space. Oh yeah, you betcha anybody with big hands is gonna hit their wrist on that. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but it is definitely still no worth noting nonetheless. Also, I would like to emphasize really quick, the trigger's catch is like almost all the way pulled down, not at the very start. So you can pull it down and it won't catch until you get to there. 
which is really weird and it doesn't feel reliable. Now this is a subjective point, but I think where this blaster really shines is when you get one of these stocks and put it on it. It becomes the most comfortable blaster in your collection. It is the perfect pull. It is very comfortable. It feels great to shoulder this because the stock attachment is so tight and robust. It feels great. It feels like an actual machine gun. And I honestly love shouldering this and holding it like this and just being able to dry fire it. Emphasis on dry firing it. Firing this blaster is not fun and I'll get into that now. So, you remember how I had that issue with the Villainator where some barrels just weren't holding the tarts right? Oh, uh, the inconsistency problem with this one is so much worse. It's so much worse. See, there's this thing called quality control. I don't know if you all have ever heard it, but some people have perfect cylinders, some people have cylinders that are completely unusable, and both of my cylinders have been the latter. Like, some barrels hold the darts really tight, but most of them don't provide any sort of grip or seal at all. So nine times out of 10, I will dry fire when I actually try to shoot a dart. It works well enough when I use newer elite darts. I mean, these elite darts are basically Get back up on the couch, you doofus. These elite darts are basically unused other than the fact they came from the Infinite, so I tried it out with them. But if I try to use waffle heads or any sort of dart that have any sort of aging at all, no, no, no functionality at all. It, it just dies. I'm gonna be doing this two times to prove what I'm talking about. First is with those elite darts from the previous shot, and then I'm gonna be putting regular waffle heads in just so you can see the reliability. Make sure it's actually lined up. Now, I'm not gonna say these waffle heads are new, but they're definitely not all destroyed. So. You notice how I was getting end strike performance? This is a record. It's unusable. And you know what? This one actually is more functional than the one that I got the first time. This one works better and it's still unusable. I, I actually think we've done it. I think I found the worst blaster ever made. This might actually be worse than the Elite 2.0 Ace because the Ace, you're only paying $5 for. This one, you had to pay a premium of 25 bucks to get this on retail, and nowadays you have to pay 30 for it. And the biggest problem isn't just the fact that mine doesn't work, it's the fact that I can't guarantee if any of them are going to work. Some of them might work, some of them might not. I have no way of telling which ones are and which ones aren't. I also think that it might have to do with just like the area that I'm in because it's super humid around here so the darts get smushier and they don't seal properly in a lot of blasters. If that's the case, why does the Villainator work so good? Why does it work so good in comparison? That thing still shoots hard even when there's no seal on the barrels at all as seen in my review. And even if I wanted to open this up to remove the air restrictor, which would probably fix the problem right then and there, I have no way of doing that because this is an Elite 2.0 release blaster, which means that it is unopenable. Well done, Shockwave. Well done. You are officially the worst blaster in my whole collection. I don't think that a proper outro is warranted for this video, but I will say if you did enjoy this, subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, and comment down below, blah, blah, blah. What do you think of this blaster or any blaster you want me to do in the future? I know exactly how we should finish this video off. One.
Three. Four. Come on, you're not on the ones yet. Oh, it's priming itself. Right. Five. Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, no, the cat. Oh, the cat. <laughs> I'm doing my funny outro. Six. Seven. Uh, come on. Three more. Uh, eight. Uh, nine. Uh, uh, it's priming itself again. Uh. Ten! <sighs> Thanks for watching.